This video will pick up where our previous video left off. We have an animation where a cat sprite says hello, walks up to a dog sprite, which then asks, how are you? And the cat sprite then somewhat rudely just walks away and says goodbye before disappearing. There are several places in this code where I might need to change a number in multiple locations. For example, right now I have the cat starting at the position of x equals negative 100, and then returning to that position later. If I want the cat to start farther to the left on the screen, and return to that same position again, for example negative 150, and negative 150, then I have to change that number twice. So that works if I run the program, I see the cat now starts farther to the left, but it isn't really very efficient and it can get kind of annoying to have to remember to change that number in multiple locations, especially as your program gets longer and more complicated. This is where the idea of a variable comes in. A variable lets you store a number that you can use multiple times in your program, and if you want to change it, you only have to change the value of the variable once. You can create a variable by clicking the Make a Variable button. You will then get a pop-up window that asks you to give the variable a name. You can call the variable whatever you want, but you should give it a name that makes sense for what you are using it for. Again, especially for bigger programs that get longer and have lots of variables, it becomes important for you to remember what your variables do. So for example, I could call this one X position. You also get a radio button here to select whether this variable is for all sprites or only for this sprite. For now, we're just going to leave the All Sprites button checked and click OK. We see that I now get a new variable in my list of variables over here called X position. We now want to use the set variable to value block just once at the beginning of our program to assign a, var a value to that variable. So I'm going to drag that out, snap it just below my one green flag clicked button. I'm going to use the drop down to select the variable I want. So I'm going to select X position and I'm going to set that to negative 150. Now, wherever I want to use this variable, instead of typing the number in, in each individual box, I'm going to drag the variable out from the menu and snap it in where I want to use it. So I'm going to say, go to X position, where my program now knows that X position is a variable that is storing the numeric value negative 150. Again, I'm going to do that everywhere that I want to use this variable. So I'm also going to drag it down here to my second glide block. Now I can run the program and it will work exactly the same way it did before. But if I want to change this position, I only need to change it once at the beginning of my program. So I change it once here to something else like negative 75, run the program again, since the value negative 75 is now stored in the X position variable, it automatically gets used with that updated value anywhere that I have the variable appear in my code. Another example where we might want to use a variable in this program is to control the amount of time that text is displayed on screen when we use the say block. If this is too fast, it might be hard to read, and if it's too long, it might make your animation seem too slow. We also have say blocks in three different locations. We have two here for the cat sprite, and we have one over here for the dog sprite. So to replace all three of those numbers with a single variable, I can again go over here to the make a variable button, click make a variable, I'm going to give this one a name that makes sense, for example, say time, and I'm going to make sure to leave that all sprites button checked because I want to use this variable for both of my sprites. Click OK, and then I am going to drag out another set variable block, select the say time variable, and for example, I'm going to change that to 1.5 seconds. Now, everywhere I have a say block, I'm going to drag out my say time variable, 
doing that twice here for my cat sprite and once for my dog sprite. Now I can run my script, evaluate whether I think the text is appearing on screen for the right amount of time, and then if I want to change that, for example, if I thought that was just a little too fast, I only need to change it once here at the beginning of my program. So I can increase that a little bit back to two seconds. And now all three say blocks are going to display the text for two seconds because they are using the say time variable, which stores the value two. Now, in addition to using variables like this just to access a number multiple times throughout a program, you can also do math with variables, and this is a very powerful tool in programming. If you remember from the previous video, we had to do the math by hand to figure out how long the dog should wait before saying, how are you? We wanted to wait until the cat gets up to the dog for the dog to talk and not have the dog say that too early or too late. To figure that out, we had to add up the amount of time it took the cat to say hello, wait, and then glide over to the dog, and that added up to five seconds. But if we go in and change one of these times, either changing a number directly or using a variable, then since we are doing the math by hand, we have to go back over to the dog and update this number as well. Now we will see how you can do all of that automatically with variables. To do that, first I am going to create two more variables. I'm going to create a variable for wait time and a variable for glide time. Just like I did with the say time variables, I'm going to set those at the beginning of my program. So I am going to set wait time to one second and glide time to two seconds. And then I am going to replace the numbers for those blocks in my code with the variables. So I'm going to wait for wait time seconds. I'm going to glide for glide time seconds. And then anywhere I have those blocks, I am going to use the corresponding variables. So again, if I run this program, it's going to work exactly like it did before. But Again, now if I want to change something like the amount of time the cat waits in each position or the amount of time it takes to glide from one position to another, I only need to change the value of that variable once at the beginning of the program. I don't need to open it in each location. This is a good time to point out that as you may have noticed, every time you create a new variable in Scratch, by default, it also displays on the stage. So this can get a little cluttered it can be useful while you are writing your program, just so you know what the values for all the variables are. But if you don't want them cluttering up the stage, you can remove them either by right clicking on them and selecting hide or by deselecting the checkbox over here on the left. You can always add them back if you want to just by selecting the checkbox again. So you don't have to worry about accidentally getting rid of them permanently. For now, I am going to hide all of them, but again, remember you can always get them back by clicking the checkbox. Now we are going to go over to the code for our dog sprite, and rather than doing the math by hand and manually typing in the amount of time to wait, we are going to use operators blocks, which we haven't seen yet, that have a bunch of mathematical operations you can do with variables. Up at the very top is an addition block that lets you add two numbers, so we can snap that into our wait block here. And to add three numbers, we are actually going to need two of those and snap them inside each other. Looking back over at the code for our cat sprite, we see that the total amount of time we need to add up until the cat gets over to the dog is say time plus wait time plus glide time seconds. So I'm going to go over here to the dog, select my variables. I'm going to drag out say time plus wait time plus glide time. And now this block of code is going to add these three numbers and wait for that amount of time. Now I could just leave all of this math directly in the wait block, but remember that if I, for some reason, make a longer program and eventually want to use this number again, it would be better to have it stored as a variable instead. So I am going to do that by creating a new variable, I'm going to call this one dog wait time. 
since it is for the dog and not the cat. And now I am going to assign a var value to that variable when the green flag is clicked. So rather than just assigning a number here, this is like writing out an equation. So I'm going to set dog wait time to say time plus wait time plus glide time. And then I'm going to wait for dog wait time seconds. To watch what happens when I run this program, I am also going to re-enable seeing all of my variables. So I have dog wait time up here at the top, which should be equal to the sum of these other three variables. Since two plus one plus one is four, I expect that when I run the program, dog wait time will become equal to four, and we see that the dog will still wait for the appropriate amount of time to say, how are you? But I don't have to do this math by hand anymore because the code is doing it for me. If I update one of my other variables, for example, if I go over to my cat sprite and increase the glide time to three, I will now expect that when I run the program, the dog wait time should be equal to two plus one plus three, so it should be six. So if I click the green flag here, we saw something strange. My glide time updated, but my dog wait time is still equal to four. And this is a funny problem you can run into when running code with multiple sprites. So both of these sprites have code that starts happening right away when the green flag is clicked. And even though it happens very fast and really too fast for the human eye to see, each of these blocks of code does take a little bit of time to run. So we can see that if these blocks of code start running at the same time when the green flag is clicked, I need to get up to the fourth block to update the glide time here. But over here in the dog program, I am setting the dog wait time variable in the very first block. So this block of code actually looks like it ran before the glide time variable was updated. So my dog wait time didn't change when I clicked the green flag. If I click it again, now that the glide time has been updated, I should get the proper value of six and the program will work a second time. So this gets a little more advanced and into deeper programming topics than we're going to cover in this video series. There is a difference between global variables or variables that can be accessed by all your sprites with this all sprites button here and local variables that can only be accessed by a single individual sprite in that sprites program. And you have to be careful with global variables and the timing between different sprites that may be accessing them or changing them. Again, that gets way deeper than we are going to get into programming concepts in this video series. The very simple solution to this problem is that you will just need to click the green flag twice to update the dog wait time. You can see there again, I clicked the flag twice and it updated properly the second time. The other solution you could do if you don't want to have to click the green flag twice is to add a couple wait blocks to control the timing. So for example, I am going to add a one second wait after I set all of these initial variables in the cat program, and I'm going to add a corresponding one second wait before I set the dog wait time variable in the dog program. What this should do is ensure that these initial blocks of code that set all of the variable values in the cat program get a chance to run before this line of code in the dog program calculates the dog wait time so I should get a proper updated value the first time I run the program. So if I go over and change my glide time down to one, now I hope that when I click the green flag, my dog wait time is going to update immediately and I won't have to click a second time. And there we go. You can see that after that one second delay, the dog wait time did update the first time I ran the program, so I didn't have to click twice. So again, we got a little advanced at the end there, but if you have followed this entire video series, you should now know how to make an animation in Scratch using costumes and multiple sprites and using variables in your code so you don't have to update numbers in multiple locations and so you do not have to do any math by hand and any variables that depend on other variables will update automatically. For links to our other tutorials and science projects you can do with Scratch, check out the links in the description of this video. For over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, visit our website, 
www.sciencebuddies.org.